Hello and welcome back to Distributions. And as always, first I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Now in today's part 8, we will talk about the multiplication of distributions. More precisely, we will explain how we can multiply a distribution by a smooth function. We consider this case because in general, when you take two distributions t and s, it's not clear at all how we should define the multiplication. In fact, such a general multiplication would lose some properties we really want. Therefore, we will restrict ourselves here to special cases. And the case we discuss now is the multiplication with a smooth function. Hence, we take a distribution s and the function f from c infinity. In other words, the function f should be arbitrarily often differentiable. And in this case, we can say what tf times s should be. Of course, what should come out is again a distribution. So the question is, what is a meaningful definition for this? And maybe we should first discuss the case that s is given by a regular distribution. This means that s can be written as tg where the function g is locally integrable. Hence, we first talk about the product tf times tg. And of course, as often, we look what happens when we put in a test function phi. Okay, now in the spirit of the last video, we know this should be compatible to the product of the functions f and g. Hence, at this point, we can just say that this should be the same as the distribution tf times g. And then, obviously, the advantage we have now is that we can rewrite this as an integral. Now, by the definition of the distribution, this is simply the integral of f times g times phi. Then, the next simple idea is that we just push the function f to the function phi. Of course, this does not change the integral at all. However, it allows us to interpret this construction as something new. Namely, you should see that the function f times the function phi is again a test function. Simply because the product gives us again a c infinity function and we don't lose the compact support of the function phi. Therefore, this integral is then the distribution tg applied to the test function f times phi. Okay, and then we can compare this right hand side here to the original left hand side there. And then we see the multiplication here tells us that we have to push this function f into the argument. And indeed, this rule also makes sense when the distribution s is not a regular one. Hence, this will be now our definition for the multiplication. In short, just a natural extension of the integral representation from above. And there I can tell you, often one simply writes f times s. It means the same thing, because we always identify functions with distributions. However, please always keep in mind, this only works for such smooth functions. Simply because otherwise we wouldn't get a test function back. Okay, and maybe for the definition here, let's use the duality pairing from the last video. In other words, we define the combination f times s with phi in this pairing. Now indeed, this looks very nice, because we just have to push this f to the right hand side. Hence, this gives us our new distribution f times s, where the formula is easy to remember. However, now one has to check that this new object indeed fulfills the two properties of a distribution. In short, we need linearity and continuity. And as you might guess, the proof here is not hard at all. So first, the linearity of this new map we immediately see. More precisely, we know that the addition and scaling is no problem at all here in the second argument. Therefore, we only have to show the continuity now. In fact, the only ingredient we need here is the Leibniz rule for partial derivatives. It's simply the product rule when we want to calculate the partial derivative of a product. However, please note, here we use multi-indices beta and alpha. 
And then this general product rule tells us that we sum over all combinations where we have beta is less or equal than alpha and then we have d beta and d alpha minus beta. Now for us here the explicit formula is not important, it's only important that we have a finite sum here. Because then we can simply use the characterization for distributions from the video part 5. And maybe a short recap here is appropriate. So let's formulate the whole thing for the distribution S. It tells us a linear map is a distribution if and only if for each compact set we find an index M and a constant C such that for all test functions that have support in this compact set we have the following inequality. Okay, and now you should see we also want to show this inequality for our new linear map f times s. And obviously we want to use that we already know that s is a distribution. Hence now we consider here the absolute value of f times s of phi. Now by definition we know this is simply the absolute value of the distribution s applied to the function f times phi. Therefore at this point we can use the inequality we already have for s. The only difference from before is instead of phi tilde we now have f times phi. Okay and there you see for this part we can apply our Leibniz rule. And then the supremum norm we can just pull into the finite sum. Okay so this is the result now and maybe you already see the overall idea here. This here is always a finite number and it does not depend on phi. Hence all these things here can be put into a new constant c. Obviously the explicit value of the constant is not important at all. Therefore let's simply introduce a new constant c tilde. And then the remaining part can be written as the sum of the partial derivatives of our test function phi. Okay, then with this calculation here you should see we can read this whole expression here now with the new linear map f times s. And therefore the equivalence here shows that f times s is indeed a distribution. Okay, and that's what we wanted to show. Now you know that the multiplication between a smooth function and a distribution is well defined. The result is again a very nice distribution. And then I would say let's discuss more calculation rules for distributions in the next video. Therefore I really hope I see you there. Have a nice day and bye.